to do a little bit of a pep rally. But before we get into this pep rally, we'd like to make a special toast to the group, ladies and gentlemen. The IU cheerleaders you can see out on the court, you were so good to them at the Michigan game. Showing their national routine last Saturday evening in Orlando at the MGM Studios. The IU cheerleaders finished 11th nationally. Our congratulations to the IU cheerleaders. For assist. Well, well, what does. What does it say? He's their leading scorer. And there was one other. No, there was one other. Three point percentage, thank you. I understand that, but you just said I could still say what it says, right? Is there a studio before us? Are you sure we're standing here early enough? Steve, can I go out and say hello to a couple of these coaches? Have a nice game, everybody. Larry, you're very garbled on this headset. Same. battle between Indiana and Purdue will be played inside Assembly Hall in Bloomington. It's the Hoosiers at 12 and 5 playing host to number 8, Purdue. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Bill Raftery. Great to have you with us. The 171st meeting all time in this very intense rivalry. Lately Purdue has had the upper hand. The Boilermakers have won the last four. They've also won three of the last four Big Ten titles with scrappy play, Bill, and I think the player who best exemplifies that style is Brian Cardinal. I know you're an aggressive player. I've seen you work. This is raising at a level. Brian Cardinal gets thoroughly involved in every all the bumps. They set him up. He's great without the basketball, and he'll break down the defense with good penetration. He's their team leader in points, assists, and three-point shooting. Purdue and Indiana from Bloomington in a moment. 
CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is... Hello. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two. I'm really only hearing out of one ear. One, two. Here we go. Thank you. Yeah. Real nice. I didn't like that one cut. Uh, uh, from Larry, uh, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it in the car. Uh, I'm not sure which one, what? but we'll make it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You got? Are you okay? You got enough room there, Bill? No, are you? I don't need both. You okay? okay. Great day in Bloomington, a sellout crowd inside Assembly Hall. Better than 17,000 on hand to watch Purdue and Indiana. Purdue trying to win in this building for the third straight year, something they have never done. They have Chad Austin with Alan Eldridge, Jerron Cornell, Ryan Cardinal, and Brad Miller in the starting lineup. And for Indiana, it's A.J. Guyton with Michael Lewis, William Gladness, Luke Recker, the talented freshman, and Andre Patterson is the center. The three guard starting lineup for Purdue. Nucleus of three guards and three front line players. A little more pressing from Gene Cady than we've seen in the past. He's now Purdue's all time winning as coach. And Bob Knight is also the all time winning as coach at Indiana with 610 career victories. Purdue won the opening tip. And the Hoosiers, Sean McDonough, go man to man, their traditional style. Cornell, Cardinal, and now the pull up from the lefty Allen Eldridge. He averages seven points per game, and Purdue scores on its first possession. Now, Indiana may be forced to switch. Great screens and bumps, both ends of the floor. And the runner in and out for William Gladness. Miller, nice pass. Cornell was all alone. That gets Bob Knight off the bench, unhappy about a defensive breakdown. Left the player all alone under the bucket. Well, they trapped, and they didn't step over and take the cutter, Sean. Now a lob for Patterson. He's fouled and rolls off. Brian Cardinal called for the foul, his first. And Patterson will shoot two. Well, good denial, and they get great support generally, but look at the hold off by Patterson. Nice looping pass, the attention, Miller late, and of course, Cardinal underneath. So these teams are very similar in how they screen, make their cuts, look for the free man. I think they're both going to have to make adjustments during the course of the game. Patterson, 81% for the season from the line. Andre, the senior from Abilene. Been some talk. He was one of the players unhappy here, but he said yesterday that Coach Knight gives much more positive reinforcement than negative. It just doesn't come across that way to most casual observers. Are you a casual observer? Yes. <laughs> Here's the continuing screen. Good breakdown with the dribble, but Rector takes the baseline away. And Cornell. Dribbled it off his leg. So Purdue leads 4-2. to two. Gene Cady's team at 15-3 overall, 3-1 in the Big Ten. Third place in the moment, but tied for first in the loss column. And the win today would get them back into first place. And a moving screen away from the ball. William Gladness called for the foul. Jody Sylvester made the call. He's working with Ed Hightower. And Art McDonald, the trio of Big Ten officials in this one. And Sean, if they call as you do your homework here, the bumps and movements, uh, they're going to have a lot of whistles. We won here last season. Won four in a row in this rivalry. Five of the last six. And you saw that Purdue has the all-time lead, 100-70. to 70. Cardinal missed a three. Nice tip by Cornell. Purdue is the only Big Ten team with a winning all-time record against Indiana and also the only Big Ten team with more conference championships than Indiana. Breakdown with the dribble. 
Wrecker, three out of the corner. Luke that, Wrecker. And Luke will wreck your defensive scheme. He can stretch it. And the Boilermakers looking to answer. Austin's three wouldn't go. Cardinal, the high arcing follow. His first points, and it's 8-5 Purdue. More than two minutes played here at Assembly Hall. Cardinal involved both recent trips with a screen. That time with the follow. Michael Lewis, guarded by Cornell. Now Gladness, junior college Ooh. transfer. Nice move along the baseline. There won't be any happiness on the Purdue bench with that breakdown dribble by Gladness. Cardinal, nice kick out to Cornell. He missed the three. Gladness the rebound. Indiana running down one. Lewis missed the layup. Wrecker there to follow. Everything but the big concern by the two coaches was the transition, the big push, and then the follow. And that fear becomes a reality on that transition basket by Indiana. Eldridge long with a three. And it went over the top of the backboard, struck the top of the backboard. And it'll go out of bounds to IU. We talk about the intensity of this rivalry. I think it coaches? starts with the two coaches, <laughs> but also it's an in-state rivalry. The two schools only two hours apart. Gene Cady said he remembers in recent years coming in here where uh, the drive-in wasn't so pleasant. Various things hollered at his team and gestures made. But They've gotten some help with some escorts provided by the state, and all of a sudden it isn't quite as hostile as they arrive in Bloomington. It's amazing when you have a trooper around. Eh? <laughs> the gestures aren't quite the same. Gladness missed the one-hander. Miller pulled it down. Miller's been bothered this year by a sore elbow. Just now getting back to about 100%. He missed the three. Tony Mayfield is off the bench for Purdue number 20. Mike Robinson, 23, is also into the game. And Brad Miller's just been called for a foul that he didn't like. Uh, Brad Miller's the guy that reverses the ball and then makes a screen and gets to the rim. Cardinal, you notice the jump shot. He's so tough because he moves people out and, he can, and he's tall to make that dump down to Miller. Lewis guarded now by Mayfield. Nice now, bad luck. Guyton tried to force it in. He got away with it. Wrecker hit a three from that spot a moment ago. Backs in the runner. With the kiss. Well, the deep one. They ran out. Nice suckage play. Wrecker has seven. He strips Cardinal. Cardinal got it back and scores with the left hand. Well, it's Sunday. Cardinals seem to do much better on, on those type of days. He just <laughs> hangs tough. Guyton in the lane. Nice dish to Gladness. Hey, not too many stops early. Tough to tell if it's excellent offensive execution or poor defense. Perhaps a little bit of both. Cardinal oh. by Gladness and a foul. Patterson came over to help, but it might have been Gladness from behind. Now Brian Cardinal understands the game. You know, the word around the Big Ten, he's feisty. Some guy's a little upset. Mm -hmm. We talked about it last night, but he mixes his game up. He sticks his head in there, makes the deep one counting from the floor. That deuce, but right here he had made, during the course of this season, many threes. The scouting report, the preparation, get up on him, but quick enough to get to the ten. Foul was on Patterson, his first. Cardinal 81% from the line. Purdue a very good free throw shooting team. And right on cue, a miss. They're 74% collectively, the Boilers. The numbers on Brian Cardinal he is indeed flying high. Third of the team in scoring, second in rebounding. He's actually their leading score in conference play. Big 10 games, he's averaging 14 and a half. First in the team in steals, and first with a 53% three point percentage. Dad, the trainer at Illinois, I'm sure he took some heat with him escaping that program. What a contributor. And you mentioned the personality of both coaches. Are feisty. They might get offended, but they're very similar. And despite the intensity of the rivalry, tremendous mutual respect between Gene Cady and Bob Knight. Spirited start. It's IU by two at our first TV timeout.
Indiana has been on the losing end of the last two Purdue trips to Bloomington a fact that hasn't sat very well with Andre Patterson. They've beaten us the past two times here they spit on our floor they've they've stomped on our floor they've they've been you know they've it just makes me sick some of the things that if when I go back and remember some of the things that I've noticed after they've beaten us here it just makes me sick to my stomach. Hmm. Well, Pepto Bismol might come in handy. Play this <laughs> tough defensive Purdue team. That time they went full court. They're trapping more, as you noted earlier. From the elbow, it's A.J. Guyton with his first basket. Charlie Miller's come in for Indiana, wearing number three. 15 to 11. Indiana leads five minutes in. Sean, everybody can post up for Purdue. That makes it tough because little guys have to come down and defend. Good catch on an errant pass by Mike Robinson. He did well to gather it in. Now Jerry McQuay, the left-hander. And three lefties on this Purdue team. He missed the shot. Lewis found Wrecker running the floor. Blocked by Miller. That's a goal, Tan. Well, Lewis is feisty. He and the coach got after one another. You keep making passes like that. He said, if Bob Knight is right, I stand corrected. But he never tells us not to speak our voice out there. And Mike Lewis did, and that time with some actions. Wrecker has nine already. He averages 12 points per game. Michael Lewis called for the foul. His first. Chad Austin's going to come back in for Purdue. He replaces Tony Mayfield. And Alan Eldridge is returning as well for Mike Robinson. Bobby Knight back in Army started great man to man defense. Al Balbo was a longtime assistant. It's continued very sound, good help philosophy. There's record all the way under the rim, Sean, to assist. Kick I, ball, they reset the shot clock. I was I knew him when he didn't wear a sweater. He couldn't afford a sweater, maybe. <laughs> back in his early days. for A.J. Guyton as he comes out of the game. Rob Turner is in, and that's a charge. Now, I don't like this at all. I don't think that's a charge at all. Record does a great job. I don't blame you. <laughs> Would you explain what he just said? Uh, we do have some families listening. Yes, I think he said, Mr. Official, I did not agree with that call at all. <laughs> well, Wrecker, off the ball, we've seen him do this, and this is the play that I think upsets Gene because there, he's he got to have a right to come down. He was right under him as he hit the floor. Wasn't leaning forward either. Wrecker, the freshman from Auburn, Indiana, Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana last year. Pretty dish. Charlie Miller, that's a from just inside the arc. And Miller rebounds the miss. And they're playing better because of dribble penetration, I think, and kick. Indiana's played well lately. The Hoosiers have won three in a row, nine of their last 11. In the day, and they'd be eight games above 500 for the first time this season. Chad Austin drains the three. Now, record did a nice job faking the charge. That time he got lost on a screen. You can't leave Austin alone. He really uses his picks. Lewis got it over to record. Turner open for a three out of the corner. Rob Turner, the junior from Wilmington, Delaware. How about him? He didn't play against Northwestern at all. He gets a chance, lights up the first one, wants to show the coach. And foul called on Lewis, his second. The ability to get free. Make sure you use the puppies in attentive defense's record. Just relaxes a little, just a brush screen. And Woody's brother, Chad, continues to light it up from deep. The three-point record holder over Ponzo Martin. We want to send our best to Ponzo Martin, one of the great players in Purdue history. Been playing over in Italy, losing a lot of weight. Went to have an examination, found out he had a tumor on his lung that was removed. And we're told that the prognosis is good. I know college basketball fans everywhere enjoyed watching him play. Send their very best. A great kid and compa nice pull up here. The shot wouldn't go for Cornell. Guyton's back in the game for Indiana. Larry Richardson has checked in as well for the first time, wearing number 33. Ducked in by Richardson. Pretty. Turner. And Guyton, Sean, with that ability. Unselfish delivery. 
Five points off the bench for Turner. Cardinal fires a three. Rebound hit the floor, and the battle is won by Cornell. Austin. Eldridge wide open. Off the mark from three. Robinson a tip. Follow the rebound action on Robinson. Great looks. Uh, Purdue unable to knock him down. A little frustration. But this is the ability of Guyton. Look at turns the corner. Great read by Turner as his man helps out. You can just see all face the basketball. Turner with the back cut. The easy little kiss delivery at the end. All set up by Guyton. Indiana by eight. 22 14, 12 20 remaining. Indiana shot the ball well lately, shooting better than 50% in each of the last four games. That time they missed a short shot as Richardson went up and missed. And Guyton set it up again, Sean. Yeah, Purdue, or Purdue doing a nice job on offense. Look at this breakdown by Carter. That's 6 8, 6 9 package of strength. Able to do what the little guys usually do. Richardson called for the foul, his first. Bob Knight had a familiar visitor in his office before the game this morning. Tony LaRussa, manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, longtime friend of Coach Knight. He thought maybe it was World Series time when you walked in. <laughs> maybe he was in the wrong place. Well, he does know some luminaries, this guy. And it's been a tough time for him. Mm -hmm. A lot of things uh, which we mentioned during the course. Collier, for example, not coming back. And, and it upset the program a little because Lewis and Wrecker were roommates of his, but it, the sadness is Collier was unhappy, and then going to Georgia Tech, I'm sure, will have a good career. But other guys now are playing better. Gladness right. is getting the minutes and taking advantage of it. Gladness, statistically, is giving them actually better numbers. He's moving into that starting spot after Jason Collier transferred. Austin fouled as he went up for the dunk. Wrecker hit him. First foul on Luke. Sean, valuing the basketball. Not good use of the bounce. I mean, this is just a little deflection from the rear, and then you take off towards your goal. That's all part of it. Nice little strip. And what a tower of strength here is. Woody challenges the 10, and Wrecker maybe should have used some judgment. Let him have the deuce. Four points now for Austin. Gene Cady has really been on the officials during this stretch. Just now has taken a seat trying to. He's, down a little bit. he's in full boil at the moment. He's got to keep up with Bob. <laughs> and that's not easy. Back to Bloomington after this. Sports line on America Online. The press effectively forced Gladness to make the decision. They get the little nickel dimer. If you call them closely like that, the press becomes ineffective. Chad Austin with the reach in. Death Valley, the corner. Uh, you don't want to end up in this area if at all possible. And right now, they too many people initially Purdue. They don't cover over the top. It should have been a quick hit to the postman beyond the trap. Alan Austin was his first. Guyton dribbling up. The court at Cornell right on him. Six point lead and the ball for Indiana. Wrecker stripped. Nice defense by Austin to hit Wrecker on the way out. Now, Sean, you haven't called Andre Patterson's number or name much. In this offense, they forget about him once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I think he could be a factor. He spaces out for a 10, 12 footer plus the post up baskets. He was an All American coming out of high school, and one of the constant criticisms. His Indiana career has been that sometimes he isn't authoritative enough that he doesn't take charge aggressively. Blends in more than mm -hmm. is dominating. Miller with a nice duck in. They don't find it. Patterson's banging him pretty good. Austin, a long three. 
And the rebound came down to record. Patterson got tangled up underneath. They were a good three point shooting team, but not today. One for nine. They're almost 40% as a team for the season. Miller hits the deck. Race for the rolling ball. Hustling through a terrible pass. Knee high with too much on it past Eldridge. And hustling, too. I mean, Miller, the big guys involved in that play. And what did Gene say to both of us about ball handling in today's generation? He said it's amazing to him how bad passing is in basketball today. Well, for a former football player, he shouldn't be condemning this sport. But valuing the ball has become an important aspect of college basketball. Those that do usually win. Extended half court trap here. Miller way away from the basket. Gladness and a baby hook. The record had a tip, but it wouldn't go. And here's Cornell. Cardinals the reverse guy out top. Miller traveled. Patterson has played terrific defense. He caused that war before he caused the turnover by hustling back when Austin made the miscue. Heads up play, very involved. Maybe not doing it on the offensive end, but certainly a factor on the D. And like Patterson, Miller can be a little bit up and down do as well. Record. Got his own rebound. And missed, and Miller pulled down the rebound, wound up ripping it away from Gladness. Oh, oh, Eldridge, right at the very proper angle in the turn of the shoulder by Austin. Austin showing great speed as well as he ran the floor. He has seven. And Purdue's back within four, 22 to 18, more than midway through the first half. We're at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Wrecker, a little long from three-point land. Using the floor. Cornell, another three-point miss. Miller. Held ball with Guyton. Bob Knight didn't like the call. He took the stroll all the way down to the corner. He's got to, he still has a step left. Uh, the ability to give it at the proper time can do good things for your basketball team. Both teams very unselfish. Great angle turned in by Austin. Tony Mayfield's coming back in for Purdue. He'll give Allen Eldridge a rest. For Indiana, it's Record Guyton, Turner, Gladness, and Patterson. This is Guyton, lost for a Purdue, rather, it's Austin, Robinson, Mayfield, Miller, Good job by Miller, maybe a little discard. Tough three falling away. Cardinal is knocked free by Patterson. Turner will it count? Will it count? Yes, it will, says Ed Hightower, and that's two fouls on Brian Cardinal. He can light it up quickly. Well, he's amazing. Didn't get the call at Northwestern. Against Ohio State, 10 points. Just delivery inside. I had a feeling he would play well because he didn't play the game before. Mm -hmm. Guys, uh, let me show that gray haired guy on the sidelines a thing or two. One Luke replaces another. Record goes to the bench. Luke Jimenez. Is into the game for Indiana. Very number 12. There's Turner at the line. First year at Indiana. The junior college transfer from Tyler J.C. in Texas. Where he was a teammate of Tony Mayfield. He's now at Purdue. We talk on the phone quite a bit. Didn't want to talk about this game or rivalry. Austin took the handoff from Miller. And they were teammates in prep school up at MCI, Main Central Institute. And they're just pushing along as well. The people in the state of Maine who really had to endure great hardships. Wake up that ice storm. Miller. Oh, they got a foul. I like to jump ball. That's one of those calls, Sean, that they don't like a guy to lean back in as an offensive performer. Sometimes this is called the charge. I think this would have been a perfect jump ball. See the right out. See him lean back in. Now, technically, that could have been. Miller's initiation of the contact. And that's a tough one because all of a sudden you got to hide Patterson with the two. Miller with his first point. Brad averages 16 a game. Richardson back into the game for Patterson. Brad Miller, 1,202 career points. Now number 21 all time. Blue's career scoring list, the senior from Kendallville, Indiana. 
making him set up the trap. They got a perfect, good job going over the top. Turner, who got it ahead of Gladness. Gladness, a bad pass. Now a scrum, and it's Austin with it. He looks to push. Indiana by five. And Miller's got his guy. Look at the help by Jimenez. Robinson. His father, Mike Robinson, was a great player at Southwest Missouri State. He won 1,000 points in his two years at that school. Pretty good high school play. Feely starting to dive and get active on the floor. Austin went to his knees. Jimenez took it away. Guyton ahead of the field. Mayfield hit him hard. I'll tell you, that kid was close to an intentional. What do you think? I think it was close, but I think the officials made the right call and calling it just a two shot foul. Well, you misused the dribble. They're having some problems. Jimenez right there, active. And the big concern was getting out in the open floor. Purdue did not want to give up these opportunities. There's the giveaway. I think he was going to actually pass the ball, too. Nice feel for the game by Guyton. Might have been a pass attempt, and that's what Gene Cady is arguing. But they called it a two-shot foul. Now Ed Hightower is coming over to the bench and telling Gene Cady he has heard enough from Gene and his assistants. Ed heard something. He didn't know where it came from, so he went over to Gene Cady and said, I don't know where what I just heard came from, but it's going to stop right now. I agree with Gene in that instance. That was a pass off, as you said. They called it a two shot foul. He's got pretty good eyes down there. Really academic now because it would have been a one and one anyway, right. and he made the first, so he was going to get the second. A.J. Guyton has four points, the sophomore from Peoria. I think they got to ride Miller a little bit. He's got a screen. He's the reverse guy now. He goes and gets somebody, and they get him down to the box area. Not yet. An excellent passer, led Purdue in assists last year. First center ever to lead Purdue in assists. Robinson, a bad pass, and that caused the foul. McQuay had to foul Guyton, or he was going to break away for two all alone. And that's the second personal on Gary McQuay. And Sean, what happens on road games, there you're not patient enough to bring it to the big guy. You're always in a hurry. And the step in and the run out at the other end. But Purdue a little out of sync, and I think it always happens on the road. You can't get that composure necessary. And the Purdue coaches told us before the game, they believe Indiana's defensive intensity is much higher when they play here at home. Now, I'm knocking them for the road in the last five years, 71% of the road Purdue. But it's still, you still get a little rattle. 37 and 15 on the G in the last five years. Who has not lost a road game this year, a true road game. They did lose up in Alaska. In neutral court against North Carolina. Their other losses to Kentucky and to a surprising Michigan State team. The Spartans off to a great start in the Big Ten. Nine point lead here for IU. Indiana leads by nine, just under eight minutes remaining in the first half. The Hoosiers shooting 50%, trying to accomplish that for the fifth straight game. Purdue struggling from three, and as you point out, Bill, struggling a little bit for rhythm on offense. A little out of sync. Uh, seemed to be rushing, not controlling the tempo, at least on that end. That's how they get the runouts in the end. They've been sounding the open floor, making real good judgments. Guyton, I think, has stepped up his game beautifully, Sean. Guyton on the floor right now for Indiana with Jimenez, Miller, Gladness, and Richardson. Mayfield and Miller, Robinson, Cornell, and Austin, the rest of the fives from Gene Cady. Cornell nearly had it slapped away by Miller. Indiana coach is praising Miller for the way he's accepted his role off the bench, doing a lot of important little things to help this team succeed. Miller fouled on the way up by Richardson. And that's the second on Larry Richardson. The ability to get yourself free, so important in motion offense. Miller ends up on the box, 
Richardson does a nice job now to screen and now re-duck another screen and turn in on your guy. And right here, a little jump hook. Just couldn't get in position to knock it down. But the difference between Patterson and Richardson, a few pounds and experience. Miller made the first. Three points for Brad. Alan Eldridge back in the Purdue lineup. Mayfield receives hats on the back as he arrives at the boiler bench. Had that problem with the elbow and uh, fought through it with some difficulties. When he plays well, they're a different team. Mm -hmm. Tough to match up with him down the block. As we saw on Tuesday night in Champaign when Purdue beat a very good Illinois team by 10 on the Illini home court. First league loss for Illinois and in that game. Miller at 18 points and 16 rebounds. The Illini had a big lead against Michigan State early in the game and lost it. People talking about Michigan State as a surprise. We used that word a moment ago. Tom Izzo's team topped the Big Ten standings. I'm not so sure later in the year people are going to look at them as a surprise. They're a very athletic team and they're using that athletic mm -hmm. team very well. Sound, a great road win against Purdue to open up the Big Ten season. That time Guyton got away with one on the baseline drive. They need a shot with the clock at two. That's an air ball and a shot clock violation just before it went out of bounds. Now that's a breakdown amongst the five. We've got to be alert and attuned to the shot clock, get right into something, maybe the drive and kick. They've been doing that nicely. Just about to say it seemed that Wrecker had been on the bench for a long time, and now he's coming back into the game for Indiana. With the IU lead seven. Robinson has been a very valuable sixth man this year for Purdue. He's got range. Air ball. Robinson, nice moves inside. He goes out, you got to make sure you check out the other guys. There's the first basket of the ball game for Mike Robinson, the sophomore from Peoria. He had a good game Tuesday night at Illinois, 11 points off the bench. Now using that high post pressure release, tough look. Two questionable deliveries by Guyton the last couple of trips. Looking for Miller that time, it was deflected away. That's a three, short by Cornell. Gladness out of the pack with the rebound. Six minutes remaining, first half. Indiana by five. Mm, who are you throwing to? How far are you throwing? Can he catch it when he gets there? Big decision. Jim and his right idea, maybe a little more air under that pass. With the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Purdue down five. The Boilermakers really struggling from three-point range today. Now one out of ten. They've been played on that line. That's been the difference. You gotta go out. Nice little trap. Somebody's gotta dive. There you go. Great read. Robinson. Four points for Robinson and a nice pass by Brad Miller. And all of a sudden it's a three-point game. Purdue scored six unanswered. Richardson ends that run. And Knight with a wise move that trip too. First bucket for Richardson. He's a sophomore from Orange Park, Florida. Didn't play much last year. Foul on the drive. Eldridge took it with authority to the bucket. Uh, Sean, Indiana opened up the game with a trap on the box. And what you've got to do if you're a player, get some angles, feel the hole. It may not be the same one on the rotation. Here's the trap. And Robinson sort of delays. They lose vision on him. You can see faulty communication on the offside. Alan Eldridge at the line. Virtually perfect for the year from the line. Missed his second free throw. He opened the game of the season against Rhode Island. <laughs> that made 17 in a row since, and we just put the win <laughs> on. <laughs> you would. Ooh, what a roadblock. Right after the ball game, Robbie Eggers, and he rattled Eldridge with a screen. Now, he'll do anything to help them win. I mean, he felt great. I mean, that's like scoring a 1,000 points for Eggers, taking somebody out of the play. And been some oh. write-ups about him. He's just happy to contribute whatever way he can. He was one of those players Bob Knight called in at the end of last season and said, you might be better off going somewhere else. You're not going to play here very much, if at all. I'll help you go somewhere. If you want to go to Division II, mm -hmm. so you can play right away. Eggers said, no, I want to stay here and do whatever I can. And he really has not played very much this year. 
played in half the games this season. Eldridge, a miss. Bouncing ball went to Robinson, and he'll have a chance for three. Fouled by Gladness. Mike Robinson has six points. And the weak side rebounding so important. Right, here's the shot now. Just Robinson, even though it may look like a foul, in basketball, you got to get the guy under the rim. He just does a nice job relocating the defender and then finishing off with a chance for three. Robinson, the miss. Run down by Jimenez. Jimenez seeing quite a bit of playing time this afternoon. He's from Minnesota, Redwood Falls, Minnesota. Played for his dad in high school. And very active without the ball. Jimenez, oh. three, Luke Jimenez. Isn't that amazing? You never know who's gonna step up. Only getting about 10 minutes a game when he does play. Here's the trap again. Miller, Three. nice moves in traffic, and he scored with a little bump from Eggers. Six points for Brad Miller. He's got some step moves. He understands that offense. Under four minutes remaining in the first half. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery, sold out Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. Turner missed a three from the corner, and it's Cornell looking to push. Down the lane. Mm, and he went for the dribble, didn't he? Luke. And move those legs. Bob Knight wants the timeout. A little breakdown. Nice run by Purdue. 20 second timeout. Called by Bob Knight. You know, we mentioned cbs.sportsline.com and Coach Knight has gone into cyberspace. Well, we knew that years ago. Website. <laughs> <laughs> and that debuted in December. CoachBobKnight.com, a comprehensive look at the coach, both on and off the court. And we're told in the first month, they had one million hits. Mm. Now Coach has taken some hits this year. But <laughs> well, does he have to respond to them? <laughs> Not all one million, but his website, very popular. Well, he has his detractors, and a lot of people just don't like how he gets after his people. But Bob Donawal, who was an assistant here, uh, Bob was saying, I give you Scott May, Quinn Buckner, Mike Woodson, John Laskowski, and how they grew and became men. I mean, it's a tough call. It's, it's This generation, a lot of people don't like that in-your-face type of style. He believes that he teaches them the right things, wants them to win. And those that stay, I mean, they really love them when they leave. It's just some guys aren't cut out maybe to come here. And that's a decision for parents. And of course, the criticism, as is often the case, gets louder when he doesn't win as much as he did in the past. In recent years, Indiana has been an NCAA tournament caliber team, but not much better than that. Certainly not a threat to go deep into the tournament. A very quick exit in the first round last year against Colorado. Ron Felling alongside him. I always try and pep him up, as you know. You know, hang in there. The ability now to use the dribble, something that has been absent in recent years. They're trying to take advantage of the opening. And I said to him, you know, how would you feel if you had my record? I'm trying to pep him. He said, I'd kill myself. Very affectionate. Uh, but he is the kind of a guy that has his belief strong. He thinks you should work harder. When he tells you something and you don't do it, you draw his ire. Now, Dugan Fife's brother is coming here. And I guess a reporter asked Dugan's mom, and I'm not, uh, is he afraid of being hollered at? And he said, well, he'll holler back. So the two of them will have something in common if he can, when he arrives here.
minutes, four seconds remaining until halftime. And coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Michelle Tafoya and Clark Kellogg in Connecticut for UConn's win over Georgetown. I'm sure Clark had some good nights against that guy when he was in the Big Ten. Purdue ball out of the timeout. The Boilermakers down by four. Four by nine moments ago. Eldridge, Austin, Robinson, Miller, and Cornell. Richard Mandeville has come off the bench for IU for the first time. Wrecker sent sprawling by Miller. Jimenez quickly out to deny the three-point shot from Austin. Miller fouled. The crowd wanted to travel. Art McDonald said he was pushed. Bob he, Knight, as you can see, <laughs> thinks it was a travel. He looks good without the stripes making that call, but I thought a jump hook was in order. Great hold off down in the lane here. Just the ability to bang, cut, get in position. Now that's just good, quick footwork. Now here, a lefty jump hook was in order right there. May have made it and still got to the goal. Well, Ed Hightower, veteran official and an excellent official, showing restraint with both coaches. He's already worn the Purdue bench, and now he's telling Bob Knight in a firm way that he's seen enough of that act for a while. What he was explaining, though, Sean, the jump stop is what Bob Knight thought happened, but it was a left-right, so the left foot's the pivot foot. Now you can still step. If you come down on two pivot feet, it is a walk. Mm -hmm. Miller made the first. Shooting well from the line. Purdue now 8 of 11. In the end, a perfect 9 for 9. Miller made 2. It's a 2-point game. 8 points now for Brad Miller. Straight up man as they play now. And Bill, the senior who hasn't played many minutes. He's averaging just 4.5 minutes per game. A seven footer wearing number 21 for IU. And not a bad jump shooter either. A lot of motion using the post. Good cut. Wrecker in traffic. Forced one up. Miller pulled it down. And Eldridge is ahead of the pack. Well, and Eldridge with the slam dunk. How about Miller with the kick out? He's strong. Send it in. I'm sure you could do that at that size, Sean. Absolutely. Many Two. times, in fact. The tie game, and the fans have made the trip from West Lafayette, making the noise momentarily. They're quieted by. Wreckers runner, Lucas, 13 here in the first half. A yeah, nice counter, too. Soft touch, straight on. Wrecker coming off his career high, 22 points in the win over Northwestern on Wednesday night. And Evanston, Robinson, he's done that a couple of times very nicely underneath. That is not Indiana defense. No. I mean, there are more holes in that than I've seen in many days. Turning, twisting, no communication, not a good trip. Wrecker with the much taller Miller guiding him on the perimeter. Got to get him a bailout. Shot clock 12 as Wrecker missed a three with Miller defending again. The numbers favor Purdue. For now, the lob, Austin, a ball for a charge as he ran over Jimenez. Well, I don't know about the end of that, uh, but down the one end, Wrecker takes the jumper. Leads to the fast break, and you just see here, well, I guess there was contact, but good aggressive filling of the lane. Austin thinking it was just a normal maneuver as he charged the goal. Gene a little bit upset at that particular call, but Wrecker settled. He had Miller on him, and he, all he had to do was put it on the floor a little bit. He could have been creative. Double bonus now. Ten team fouls called against Purdue. That's the second on Austin, so Jimenez will shoot two. Shot two free throws all year. That's the third. He's two out of three for the season. Coming up next, related by that game between New Mexico and Arizona, which many of you will see. Sean, how, would you, how do you think the referees react when they get their tissue telling them they have the Purdue-Indiana game? Do you think a little curl in the stomach? Well, I saw Jody Sylvester, one of these officials on the plane flying in here last night. He said he was going right to the hotel when he landed to make sure he got a good night's sleep. Oh, I thought he may have uh, gotten something else, maybe, to calm him down. And once again, the ability to turn the corner and get the small change on the reach in. Eldridge the drive and the foul on Turner is his first. But thus far, it's been pretty quiet. I mean, not as heated. Officials have full control of the game. They've done an excellent job, as you would expect, from these three officials. But it isn't easy with the... 
intensity and emotion in this rivalry. Alan Eldridge at the line. He's one of four team captains. Along with Austin Miller and Cardinal. Gene says he's a perfect citizen. One of those kids you don't have to worry about. Long time, solid contributor. What if he makes this now? If they run that 1-2-1-1, one, 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 sometimes there's tough decisions for the Indiana team. Good save by Miller and a nice pass. And Miller swatted Eldridge's shot. Charlie Miller came over to deny inside. And as the ball was collected by Mayfield, a timeout called by Purdue. Now Bobby Knight thought they should have gone and gathered the rebound. You can't give Purdue this many opportunities. You mentioned earlier how they've been able to dive into areas, but coming up with loose balls. You do this against either team, you're going to walk out with a win. You're just a good hustle down right there. Bob was mad at that by man. Not much more he could have done, though. His hands sticking in the middle of the pack. Couldn't get both of them on it. Gene Caney earlier this season became the winningest coach in Purdue history when he got the victory over Louisville on December 6th. He passed Ward Lambert, who won 371 games in 28 and a half seasons at Purdue. Gene Caney now 381 wins at Purdue and 419 overall as a Division I coach. And one of the class acts, too. He can do it on and off. Cornell battle for the rebound. Miller rips it away. 30 seconds left in the half, and the shot clock is off. And the new bench hollering out. They want one shot, and that's what they'll get. Going to spread. Might see a drive to the goal late, early enough to get a tip. Kind of running the regular stuff. Double screen. Ooh. And that's what pressure deal do. Eight turnovers committed by the Boilermakers. Would you gamble with Patterson for this play? Guess you don't want to get him the third, though. Get it to Guyton or Wrecker. Let him do some damage. Speed dribble. Got a push. Well, they inbounded it 90 feet from the basket. So with eight seconds left, Guyton had to hurry. His pass deflected away. Chance for a heave for Miller, and it won't go. That's the end of the first half. The score, Indiana 40 and Purdue. 39. Michelle DeFoy and Clark Kellogg will be along with Pennzoil at the half right after this message and a word from your local station.
Chris Cardinal got two. A big chance. Back in Bloomington at halftime, the Indiana lead is one. Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery at one point in the first half, the Indiana lead was nine. What did Purdue do to get back into the ball game? Well, if you recall, we were chatting about how fast Purdue was running their offense. Now they're diving, getting free, using their screens in a much better fashion. It's got them going. And do a little drawing for us if you'd be so kind. <laughs> I'd be, it'd be my pleasure. <laughs> well, the availability of Wrecker here, you'll see the one point guard and we're gonna watch Miller in the middle, look to help and trap. Now watch what happens here, Sean. Look at all the white shirts and a forward mentality bouncing the floor. You're gonna see a leak out. Miller, who went and helped. No point guard back there. Everybody below the line and the ability to finish with fine fashion by Eldridge. Indiana led through most of the first half. Largest Purdue lead was four points, but that was very early at six to two. They have a chance to take the lead with the first possession of the second half. Austin, Cardinal, Cornell, Miller, and Eldridge. Same five that started the ball game begins the second half for the Boilermakers. And Cardinal with the two is rested, and Patterson as well. Austin for three. It's been a recurring problem today. For Purdue, the Boilermakers now one out of 12 from three-point range. They're better than 39% for the season coming in. If you watch all the cuts and how fatiguing it can be guarding this Indiana team as well as Purdue. Patterson a fade away, too strong. Chad Austin came down with it. Patterson played just 10 minutes in the first half due to the foul difficulty. Patterson's guarding Miller. The third field goal attempt of the game by Brad Miller, and that one rattled in, and the Boilermakers lead by one, one minute into the second half. He took the hit and was still able to knock it down. <clears throat> and a five-second count as Lewis was dribbling and was closely guarded, and the ball goes back over to Purdue. Well, if you don't move and you don't time the ball to meet the free man, you can have a five-second violation. Cornell in the Miller. Nice cut. Oh, is that great basketball? Are they reading the trap? Decimating the Hoosier defense with good reads. And you've talked about it in the first half. Indiana and characteristic giving up a lot of shots right underneath the basket that are wide open for Purdue. It was Gladness who scored underneath for Indiana. First point of the second half for IU. Another nice pass. Miller traveled. What a, he was a little bit too anxious with the wide open basket. What a great look, though. Uh, they have just done a wonderful job analyzing the defense. Indiana not jamming it up to help out. Once the catch occurs, the trap appears. And right there, the dive to the 10, an easy finish. The weak side have to come over and assist. Lewis passed up the shot that elicited groans from some of the audience here at Assembly Hall. Patterson, too strong from the free throw line. Luke Recker able to control it. He's better from outside, I think, showing them a little post. And this fouled by Miller from behind. Chance for a three-point play for William Gladness, the junior from West Memphis, Arkansas. Well, smile and ecstasy. And Gladness, the great quick step, electrifying the finish. He can blow by most little people. I mean, Brad Miller with the lingerie lingering there as Gladness lights it up. Two fouls on Miller. Three point play the old fashioned way by Gladness. Gladness had a big game in their win here against Michigan. His first career double double 14 points, 12 rebounds. Trying to fill the void created by the departure of Jason Collier. Hands for about. I'll tell you, that should go the other way. Oh, what the elbow by Cardinal. The ref saying the action was earlier. Now, Cardinal, who can make the three, they go up on him now here. Just, oh ooh, now you've got to go the other way, Art. Well, we mentioned earlier, there are some coaches around the league starting to mumble a little bit about what they think is dirty play on the part of Cardinal, and... He's physical. That's an elbow. In the, school, in, in the schoolyard, you're late for dinner. You start roughing it up, somebody's going to go home damaged. Now, Patterson 
call for grabbing Miller in the low post, and that's the third on Andre. So quick whistles here. Already five, or rather three fouls called in less than two and a half minutes. I'll tell you what that's called for. I think Hightower saw Cardinals elbow. Mm -hmm. And now to clean it up, I mean, that's like small change, puts the big guy in a hole. Just let him play. You have a flashback to your coaching oh, moments right there. Oh, shudder. Right here. Missed the off balance shot. Miller hit the floor to keep it alive for Purdue. Indiana leads by two. Nearly three minutes played, second half. Austin, big time. Nice pull up. Mm, I'll say. Mentioned that Purdue has won here in Bloomington each of the last two years, and in both games, Austin's hit the big game-winning shot late. Gladness a chance for another three-point play. And Cardinal picks it up. Just a little late closing. Indiana very sharp on that sequence. Well, the look and lob, part of the inattention defensively, and that's, that's not good coverage, and you can see the reaction outside. Cardinal takes a seat with three fouls. Gary McQuay has replaced him. Gladness, chance for his second old-fashioned free throw play in this half. He missed the free throw. McQuay rebounded. That way for Miller getting touches. Cornell, nice shot while backing up. Mention the shots by Austin to win the games against IU here in Bloomington the last two years. Last year he had a game-winning shot with 0.6 seconds left in overtime. And in 1996 he had a game-winning 3 with 14 seconds. Gladys Gladness put up the shot. McQuay rejected it on the way down. And Gladness is the man of the moment for Indiana. He has nine points here in the second half in just more than three and a half minutes. I saw him against Temple early in the year, so he's got great feet, quickness to get himself free. Indiana by two. Cornell right to the other baseline, the other side of the basket and missed. Lewis. Brecker off the wing. He'll go to the line. And Lewis down on the floor. He's so excited. He got it to his partner. Uh, this is patience. The fade dribble sets all of this up. Defense goes to the ball side. The little hit. The nick. The sweet little kiss delivery. And Luke's got some emotion. He's got some game. And that'll win a lot of affection with that smooch. Record missed the free throw. He has 15 points. Now, I know you didn't give it up much, but Lewis loved his pass so much. He was rejoicing out there. Out of bounds, it'll be Purdue ball. Gene Cady, warned again by Jody Sylvester, who comes charging over for a word with the Purdue coach. Is it Robbie? Now you didn't hang around with guys like that, I know, at Syracuse. Uh, sports management majors, perhaps. But I can hit all stars, I'm not sure. Nice scrape. And it's that's the most valuable part of a fast break. All the attentions at the rim. If you follow and hustle, you can get the knockdown. Constant enthusiasm and hustle from Luke Recker, and he has been an immediate crowd favorite here this season. He got a handle the loose ball. Eldridge double team. There's Recker again. Behind the back to Guyton. Send that one home, huh? Mommy? Wait till you see what I did. The trap at half court set it all up. Great understanding. The loose ball. The swipe. And this is a little of the Bob Davies number. Huh? Lefty, no less, off the bounce. The high sweet kiss at the end. But usually in Indiana, it starts with defense. If that didn't work, he would have kept on running out the door if that was stolen. <laughs> He does have some emotion. Those two together, rock and roll. They like to play. Luke Recker committed to Indiana after his sophomore year in high school. One of those young men grew up as a young boy in the state, dreaming about playing at IU. And he was 
living his lifelong dream. 17 points and eight rebounds for record. Well, we all have dreams, but you, most of us aren't as good as he is to fulfill them. Eldridge passed up a three, guarded now by Guyton. Cornell for a three they could use, and they get it. He can get it, Perkin. Great range. Everybody's been struggling from three for Purdue. Cornell is 13 today. He averages 12 and a half a game. More than five minutes played, second half. The lead five for Indiana. The runner short from Guyton. That's what you really need, and a good hustle play gets it back, and Miller should get a tee. And he did. He does, yeah. He feels he got fouled. Yeah. Self-control, so important for players. Gene will occasionally become irate, but I know he doesn't like his players to do anything like this. Guyton with a unfortunate shot. I think that's just a big guy falling over his own size 17s. The frustration vented, and it's two. had a frustrating day called for traveling a couple of times called for four turnovers now the technical which counts as a personal and Lewis made the first He's the best free throw shooter on the team at better than 84 percent Miller comes out of the game and Katie didn't have a word for him on the way by, but sometimes just the way Gene looks at you says enough. Well, he's he's going down. He's down there. You don't want to have a uh, breakfast with Gene if you've done something wrong. I'll tell you that. And that's part of the chastisement. Guys, big guys always have an explanation too. You ever notice? Mm -hmm. The little guy was in my way. That's a big play. Seven point game now. Record guarded tightly by Eldridge. Lewis, Guyton, Patterson, Gladness, the rest of the fives in front of the end. Cardinal the rebound, Patterson over the back for his fourth foul. That's almost false hustle. You're not going to get it. It's like as a, you can have to understand the game. And Gladness showing his ability once again with a quick feed. He had the foul line jumper. Decided to put it on the floor and get a little bit closer. But he is quick. Extending that first step. After the brief stint on the bench, after the technical, Miller's back in. And Patterson's going to go out with his four fouls. Rob Turner has checked into the game for Indiana. Indiana by seven, 57 to 50. We took down to 14 minutes remaining. He has won the last four in this series. Five of the last six meetings between the two. Early minutes of the game, a record, another rebound. Open for three. You gotta respect his range. He's got a game. We've seen him go to the goal. Cardinal trying to take advantage of record. This is the largest lead of the game now for Indiana. 10 points at 60 to 50. Austin for three. Rebound Lewis. Gladness off to Turner. Nice poise by Lewis. Record. Missed an open three. Austin moved in for the rebound. Second. Going to run some stuff. Mayfield left open. Looked like he was reluctant to take the shot, but he finally pulled the trigger, and it went down for Purdue. Well, he knew he had gladness, too. Tough match, Cardinal being played by record. Guyton. Where's the D? It's been exalted. Cornell, nice dish. Austin with the lay-in. Now, both of these coaches are known for their defensive techniques. It's gone. Bye bye. It's on vacation. A little woo woo now. Up and down. And Purdue's got some bench strength too, so that could be a concern. The leader. You're right. There is nothing resembling a defensive stop at either end of the moment. Up and down they go. Austin missed an open shot. It wasn't the defense. It was just a miss of an open 12 footer and a foul on the rebounding action against the Boilermakers. And 
Tidno needs to be careful. Ed Hightower gave him a second glance. If to ask, what did you just say to me? That's four fouls and Cardinal. I wasn't talking to you. That's the usual response. Well, you can sometimes get a technical for what you're thinking as much for what you're saying. But you're right, Sean. Everybody waving now defensively. Maybe the emotion has dissipated the energy level. The guy's not containing the dribbler. I saw an NBA game the other night where technical for staring at the referee. Yeah. Maybe it was his contact. Yeah. Yeah. Mind reader. <laughs> Jimmy Balvano said that to an official one time. Can I, can I get a T for what I'm thinking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, once again, the quick burst and the release at the end. I mean, nobody's really stepping up, making guys use some clock. Most of the time, you don't have to guess what Coach Knight is making. The foul on record was his second. Four team fouls on IU here in the second half. But he's been called for five. Twelve minutes remaining. Indiana by 11. Mayfield open for a three. Miller had great position. He was fouled and it wouldn't go down for Miller. This frustration continues. Sean, he should have gone right up. Quickly. Kept it up. Boom. Or Knocked Duncan. it in. Yeah. I mean, that size. Explode up there, big guy. Nice penetration, dish, good-looking shot that trip from by Purdue. I think initially guys aren't containing the dribbler. Things are getting wide open because of it. Two fouls on Turner. This is the first of three today on CBS. Coming Brad Miller's upset because in the background near the band, uh, they're distracting the big guy, so of course now the crowd irate. I think if I were him, I'd just take it and shoot it. Uh, they looked up, nobody's moved. Some fair skinned individuals back. Let's see if we can see anything. Yeah, they're going right through. That's why I always like wooden backboards during your era. <laughs> shoot it, Brad. <laughs> Somehow you knew the kind of day he's having all of a sudden that that one wasn't going to stay down. A 10-point game. Indiana with the lead and the ball. Okay, just a single post offense now with the nice jumper here. Guyton got the bounce. The lead grows to 12. And an offensive foul called. And the Indiana, the Purdue coaches were very concerned about what we just saw. They say record away from the ball has a tendency to take some dives draw some charges and gene katie doesn't really think that that's great basketball cbs sports coverage of ncaa basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station
Well, Sean McDonough, this is your chippy type of game. I can remember <laughs> Luke Recker picking up the charge off the ball. And right here, to me, that's not basketball. Hank Nichols, the head of the officials, he would say, well, he did knock him over. However, I don't think Hank would have called it when he refereed. No. It's one of those deals that, you know, just play on. It's nothing to do with that trip. Well, the foul was called, and Indiana has the ball back, leading by 12. 11 and a half minutes remaining. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery, happy to have you with us for the first of three NCAA basketball games today here on CBS Sports. And with, this, with the one set, look at his handle. Oh, oh my goodness. The one center, a lot more room for Indiana. 15 points now for Gladness. Averages eight per game. Makes this production has really come up in the absence of Collier. In the lane, Mike Robinson scores for Purdue. And one of those guys that can post up, and Lewis, and he should be by. Yeah, Mayfield gets the foul. Sean, do you notice the difference in the mobility now with one center? Patterson, they use a double bump, but here the ability to bounce, the elevation, the jump hook. He has become a confident offensive player. Mayfield called for his second. And it's already the bonus situation with 10.54 to go. Let's check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. And it is. Free throws. Indiana's missed only two of 16. Find out more about team and player stats for every Division I team. Get the latest scores and breaking news at cbs.sportsline.com. Lewis, the best of their free throw shooters. What a game he and Guyton had the other night in the backcourt for IU. They combined for 15 assists, only one turnover in the win at Northwestern Wednesday night. And what's great about Lewis is he's changed from a scorer to running the team. He adjusted his total game. Cornell, a miss. Indiana pulling away. The advantage 14 nearly midway through the second half. Not patient enough to give Miller a chance. Robinson had posted up. Settling for jumpers, Purdue. Gladness off the turn. Oh. How about that, huh? All the defense turns. Outside people step in. Nice little kiss banker. Great body control, although Gene Cady thought it should have been a charge, and he came leaping off the bench. And now Wrecker called for a bump before the shot. That does not put Indiana over the limit. Six team fouls, third personal on record. And look at everybody attracted to the ball. Turner, as you noted, with great agility, the dexterity to finish. And pretty solid analysis. Everybody turns their heads, you come running in. Saw the open lane to the basket and took the path for the easy two. Now these coaches are going to have a field day when they show these tapes. Nobody is guarding right now. Landis missed an easy one. Yeah, it's a miss that was really not the product of good defense. Just a missed shot. And no one races down. Only to the finish because of Gladness. Lightning with the easy finish at the other end. 17 for AJ. And all because Miller was unable to convert. Nice block at the one end, to send it in at the other for the Hoosiers. He's not happy at all, Miller. 22nd timeout called by Purdue. Rob Knight wanted to know if it was a full or a 20. Purdue is out of 22nd timeouts now. 9.32 remaining. The CBS databank. Big Ten Championships. Purdue has more basketball championships, men's basketball championships, than any other Big Ten school. Two more in Indiana. Of course, Purdue won three in a row. Streak that ended last year. If you ask the average guy, would they believe that? They would never think that. They might think this, maybe this. What do you think? In Purdue, they'd say, I don't believe that. Mm. Well, I believe it because it's true. Data bank is never inaccurate. There they go. Miller. I think that 
conversation was let's go to power. They don't have anybody to stop. Trying to extend the defense. Lewis missed the pull up. Miller gets it quickly ahead to Mayfield. Still time for Purdue in this one, but they're down 14. Nice tip in by Cornell. They want a basket interference on the Indiana bench, but it didn't look like it was out of the cylinder. Mark McDonald had a nice little angle. And Indiana beats the pressure, and Turner misses a short one. So you better make them. They're getting them right back in the game. Miller with a good job. First time check out, that time nobody to box. Mayfield to Cornell. And a foul while trying to deny Gladness got a piece of Miller and William Gladness has been called for his fourth. Uh, when Purdue has been able to get a rebound and push, they've been in position to do some damage, get easy shots. This one doesn't go down the little jumper by Robinson, but there you go. Nice little call mm -hmm. by the official and Sean McDonough. A good look at it provided by our CBS crew directed today by Larry Cavallina, our producer Steve Shear. Miller at the line with 13 points. Ably supporting us, huh? Yes. Offensive rebound by Cornell. Ooh, tough look. Way that was going in there, Allen. <laughs> Eldridge got a hand on the ball while on defense, but couldn't get it away from Guyton. And now Indiana looks to settle. Gladness oh, all alone. What the dribble can do. I mean, you really don't have to run anything. Just put it down. Get two guys to come to you. And that's answered by a three by Eldridge. So Purdue is chipping away. The lead 11 for Indiana. A big thing now is handling this pressure. Can't turn it over back here, give him an easy dose. Eight minutes remaining. Lewis with Eldridge playing him tightly. Wrecker. Some strength there. The left hand. You want to be a player? You've got to dine with either hand. Extraordinary ability to get himself in position to convert. Right here, the power jump, and he does emote. Oh, yeah, we've seen him shoot. We've seen him get in the middle of the dish. This time, the little sweet kiss at the end. And that's one for the student section. Group of football recruits brought in by IU football coach Cam Cameron this weekend. Timeout in Bloomington. remaining in Bloomington. Indiana leads by 14. Purdue ordinarily an excellent three-point shooting team. 
has been miserable from beyond the arc. And Luke Recker, the man of the moment again. Well, what does Purdue have to do in the remaining time? Well, knock some shots down, but get their press organized. I think that's the key part. Get some steals, some easy baskets. I think they got to go inside and get to the foul line. Eldridge with the ball. Now Miller. Inside, Robinson scores. They follow Bill Raftery's advice, go to the bucket. And Robinson has 12. I think they've got to force Guy to pick it up. Go trap him and let others make decisions. Austin guarding Guyton. They had a huge game last year here against Purdue. Career high 31 points, but it came in a loss. Gladness. He's got that down little right fake to the shoulder. And turn baseline with the knockdown jump hook. He has 19. He's just four away from his career high. Eldridge raised the front rim from three-point land. Held ball. And the possession arrow gives it to Indiana. Well, they got to get some energy, Purdue. Sometimes it's difficult on the road to suck it up, get after them. Lewis in the record. Guyton, Turner, and Gladness for IU and a steal. Eldridge had it after the deflection. He has it back. Cornell's had a good game for Purdue, and he hits a big three. All off the steal. They trapped that time. They hadn't done it earlier. A little difficulty once again. Six and a half remaining. Indiana by 11. Pass off the knee of Gladness. Held ball. And now it goes over well, what to Purdue. Luke Recker was trying to call right. a timeout, but his team didn't have possession of the ball. And Bob Knight saying, Recker had your attention, Artie. Recker has been superb. He's the inbounder on the pass. Could be critical that they get free. Got to sprint and present themselves to the inbounder. A little bit restless now as the lead has shrunk to 11. Miller trying to work on Gladness. Austin, tough shot, wasn't squared up. Miller the rebound. Miller the score, and it's a single digit deficit facing Purdue. Nice little read by a big guy. Got his man shoved under the 10. Cornell. Wrecker with Eldridge guarding him. Long three, plenty of time on the shot clock. Free ball tipped by Turner to Gladness. Guyton blocked by Miller and a foul call. And I was thinking he should have thrown it outside, but Guyton very clever around the rim, knows how to get that arm out. So tempting, tantalizing for big guys. They all want to block the shot. The hustle. The savvy right here. I thought he should have kicked it out to Lewis. Watch as he leans in and keeps himself up between floors just a little bit for Brad Miller. His fourth. Not yet the double bonus, nine team fouls. Right. Makes it a 10 point lead. So that was a great chance for Purdue after the miss, but they couldn't come up with the free ball. And that loose ball, and that's the key element with these teams. Cardinal and Mayfield back in for Purdue. Miller's taking the season four fouls. Two free throws by Guyton. Five and a half minutes remaining. The lead 11 for Indiana. The Hoosiers looking for their fourth straight win, trying to make it 10 wins in the last 12 games. Not the inside game now. Cardinal trying to establish. Robinson might be another guy down in the box. Cardinal had a quiet day. Didn't get it to go. The rebound, corralled by Gladness. He's been huge today. The junior college All-American last year was Gladness at Carl Albert State College in Oklahoma. And he was stripped. Mayfield stuck a hand in. Pretty pass. Oh! And that could.
could be basket interference as well. There's a foul on the layup. I think that ball was touched while it was on the rim. I think he pulled the hand away, Sean. Mm -hmm. They're both in the same area, but what a nice little look to get to the basket. This is for Soda. I don't know. Tough to tell I don't know from that angle. Let's take a look here. But good push up the floor. Doesn't convert. I think he might be right. He might have missed it, but he did have his hand up there. Robinson made the free throw. The problem knows they won't go away. Gene's guy is very feisty like himself. The ability to extend the floor. One of the reasons he likes pressing with this group, they can change the tenor of the game. Get a little more enthusiasm. Get some spurts going. Different look now. 2-2-1. Two, two, Robinson's given Purdue a nice game off the bench. He has 14 points after those three throws. Michael Lewis, two years ago, led the state of Indiana in scoring in high school, 31 points per game. Bill said he's had to change his game in college. Not as much of a scorer anymore, more of a playmaker and defender. Hey, Gland is coming out on the floor. I think he should get in the box against Cardinal. He could cause some damage down there. Wrecker. <laughs> Wrecker while he almost killed him. Oh. Not much room there either. 25 a career high for Wrecker. Wrecker defends and fouls. I think As Robinson hoisted the shot and Luke Wrecker has been called for his fourth. Uh, he made that into a tougher shot I thought but here I, I didn't think he had anything but nice little drop step to Derriere getting a piece able to get himself to the goal you can see him off the basketball one of the keys to Indiana is going without it record extraordinary in that particular area I love the silence in this building when Bob Knight summons a player it's as if they're all waiting to see is he gonna yell at him whack him <laughs> kick him spit on him pat him on the cheek pat him on the head that time he gave well, Recker a little friendly pat on the cheek after a conversation well he's got what John McEnroe used to have I think People are almost disappointed if Bob doesn't do something. And Luke, I'd say he's a crowd favorite. Oh, yes, with good reason. There are certain guys that I used to love and hold and others that I wouldn't mind saying, go down to the end of the bench and give me a call in four years. <laughs> Robinson missed. And Lewis came away with the rebound. Ten point lead for Indiana. And it's staying in just about this zip code with four minutes remaining. Much more activity now. Brighton couldn't get past the defense of Ron Cornell. A little fade to the corner for Guyton. And the NFL oh. down to seven. Guyton score the basket and then a charge called. I'm Guyton, but the basket will count. The contact after the shot had been released. AJ can embarrass you. I mean, you're out there picking up the loose garments, crossing it over in front. Timmy Hardaway at his best, and now he gets into the lane, airborne, and that's why I like the NBA rule with the hash mark. You get in there, you can't pick up the charge that close to the rim. Mm -hmm. Might be something that they could look into. Makes it easier. This one's one of those keeping everybody happy deals. Third foul on Guyton. He has 21 points. And Cornell will shoot the free throw. Ten team fouls now on Indiana. So every Indiana foul result in two. Free throws for Purdue. Robinson takes a seat as Miller comes back in. 21 now for Cornell, sophomore from South Bend. Ten point game with 337 remaining in Bloomington, Indiana.
CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile retailers. Old Spice High Endurance Deodorant and by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop. Go. Pennzoil. Let's take a look at the Big Ten standings entering today's action. Michigan State and Michigan tied for first. Purdue trying to move into that tie with a win today. And Indiana and Illinois at three and two. A real surprise, right? When you think of Michigan State, and what a wonderful guy, too. And staff. Tom Crean with the head coach. Tom Rizzo. Getting it done. Yes, they are. Patterson back in the game and scores over Miller. What a nice insertion to save him, get a little post movement. And they go and see, they got a little zone here. Oh my goodness. Don't leave him. They had a couple of possessions against Ohio State of zone. This is alarming. Is that in the end I saw in a zone? In a zone. Not, they never played again after the three by Cornell. Well, he turned right away <laughs> to Greg Gartman, his assistant, <laughs> lamenting that choice. Can't be your fault, you know that. That's right. Must be Craig's idea. Rucker's still on the bench with his four fouls. He didn't come over to Wilden Patterson bounced it past the Ladness. There aren't a whole lot of guys that can make passes. He averages one assist a game. Uh, two turnovers, Andre. Not a good one. Not too many guys gonna pick that one up. Time running out on the Boilermakers. They try to avoid their fourth loss of the season. They come in having won four in a row in 10 of 11. They're down by nine with two and a half left. And they're back to man to man. Let's see a little, a little triangle, Sean. Miller wide open, he takes the three and buries it, and it's a six-point game. Well, two gimmick defense, now they got themselves in a little bit of a hole, two open looks. They just turned and ran away from Miller and dared him to shoot the three. I don't know if that's what the coach had in mind. But he did, it didn't work. Well, he missed the one earlier. He can shoot. He's a 30% shooter mm -hmm. from three. Gladness on the move, it rattles out. Looked good the whole way, but it wouldn't stay down. Here come the Boilermakers down six. Eldridge, crowd thought he traveled. Austin to cut the lead in half, and that one rattles out. Big rebound by Turner. Oh, was that one they dodged, huh? Would have been a three-point game had Austin's three found the bottom of the net. A minute and a half remaining, Indiana by six. They're doing the right thing, they're attacking, trying to get a good one, they get an offensive foul by Patterson. He gets one a game where he moves. We talked about record picking up a charge. Patterson ends up with just a slight move and you can just see him ride his guy out. All the tapes that I happen to look at, it's small change, mm. but if the guy doesn't set his man up, you can't move, Andre. He has fouled out with four points. Quiet game for Patterson. Eldridge at the line, he has eight points. Bear in mind, he had the string of 17 free throws in a row, snapped early in this game. He's actually missed two free throws today. What reporter in her right mind would go to Algeria where terrorists are killing for no apparent reason? What reporter? Christiana Monpour, 60 Minutes Tonight, followed by Touched by an Angel and the CBS Sunday movie, Best Friends for Life, starring Sean McCann. Pack the tack, Purdue. 8-0 run for the Boilermakers, and they're down by four. 124 remaining, back for the finish in Bloomington on CBS Sports in a moment.
Sean, first time that they've done this. Tony Mayfield with his back to the basket. That's part of it. They turn the corner, Indiana. The push, but right now the hustle by the guards saves the play. They made sure to get back, and that's an important aspect of press defense. Collapse and recover. Eight unanswered points by Purdue, and it looked like they were dead and buried. They're down by four, and they have the ball with a minute 20 remaining. And the zone again, Sean. Let's see. Oh, straight up man. I think the trouble is inside. They got Miller. Cardinal collided with Ricker, an offensive foul. A huge call. It was going to be the fifth personal on either player, and it went against Cardinal, and he's fouled out. I thought he had the angle by. The high-low was developing. They hadn't been able to do this too often. Brian Cardinal not able to have the impact he generally does. Here he comes now. There's the shoulder, which gave the leverage to the official. I mean, it's one of those bang-bangers. You're happy or you're sad, depending on which side. And you know how he feels. He thought he had the angle just enough. But you got to turn the shoulder and widen out and go after the hip. Five points, four rebounds for Cardinal. He is fouled out. Lewis, the best free throw shooter, kicked out of bounds. They reset the shot clock to 35. I'm sure Bob being so small feels the zone would have its impact down the stretch. They gave the two open threes. At that time, trying to pick up the charge, and they did. Under a minute remaining, and still 25 on the shot clock. Don't want yeah, great choices in terms of who you foul. Guyton's a 76% shooter. Wrecker 75, Lewis 84. They are the primary ball handlers right now. Oh, what a great. <laughs> Lewis, the courage. Austin missed a long three. Rebound batted around. Wrecker winds up with it. Indiana with the ball up six. Got to give it. Lewis stumbled and travel. He was trying to avoid going into the backcourt, slammed the brakes on and lost his balance. And with 19.7 left, Purdue has a faint pulse. What a great delivery and glad this an accomplished finish. They need a quick shot. Cornell cuts it to four, 12 and a half seconds left. Timeout, Purdue. Well, the trap, he didn't foul, he trapped, and he got it his way, Gene Cady. Listen, Steve. Twelve and a half seconds remaining here in Bloomington. Indiana has a four-point lead over Purdue, trying to end a four-game losing streak at the hands of their arch rivals. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Jerron Cornell. Of Purdue, 27 points and seven rebounds, and Luke Recker of Indiana with a career high 25 points and 12 boards. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Lewis to inbound. Recker fouled immediately. He's 74 and a half percent from the line for the year coming into today's action. Oh, how about Lewis? I mean, a lot of emotion, wrecker a lot of emotion, but the courage to do some things, you've got to have some inners. Mike Lewis with a gamble pass. If that's stolen, 
It's going the other way. And look at Gladness. The heat on this and just out of the outstretched hands. Oh, send it in. And emote Rocky Lewis. <laughs> Wrecker adds to his career high. 26 points for the freshman. Timeout. Indiana. 22nd timeout. Sean, the, uh, I, I would think the reasoning for the zone and the gimmick was strictly size. Without Patterson, uh, they felt they would get posted up. I mean, he rode it out. Dangerous if you lose, but that's part of being on that sideline, making decisions. What about this Indiana team? As we look at the rest of the conference schedule and I enjoy the NCAA tournament, uh, looks like this group is coming together nicely after some disappointing years. The one guy is Patterson. I mean, he can't give them games like this. I mean, he's got to be a factor. He's got to stay on the floor. He had an over the top. He had a moving pick. I mean, he's got to stay in the game. He's got a nice little turnaround jumper. I think with Gladness and he together, that's a tough yeah. front line. And I think Rector's starting to feel really good about his game. Confident. We've got Guyton, another solid guy, as well as Lewis in the backcourt. They're, they're coming along. Renew needs to hurry, and they need a three. Eldridge takes a three. No with the rebound, back out to Mayfield. Gladys changed the shot. And Indiana wins! Now for Bill Rafter, Sean McDonough saying so long from Assembly Hall. The final score, Indiana 94, Purdue 88. Coming up next, game two of our triple header, Cincinnati and Louisville or West Virginia at Villanova. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA basketball championship. Pardon me? Okay. Sean, are you on? Sean. Uh, how about this? Uh, with us today, the new head coach of uh, <laughs> the, the Cleveland Browns, Sean Harbaugh. Uh, do you have a curfew uh, for your team, John? Uh, before daybreak is what we go for. We think that's helping. <laughs> Larry said. That feels pretty good, huh? Yeah. Okay. I'll do AJ first, okay? That ought to, that ought to make practice a little easier, huh? Yeah. Huh? You can get a little calm around. You're stepping up your game a little bit. Okay. Anything in? AJ Guyton, uh, solid performance in the backcourt. This is not an easy team to handle the basketball against. Not an easy team at all. I mean, we've been having trouble against teams that pressure all year. We went to attack the press, and we did that. We got easy baskets. I think they kind of wore down a little bit, and it, and it affected us in the end. I know you can penetrate, but you seem to be doing it better. Do you feel comfortable getting into the lane? Yeah, I feel real comfortable getting in there. The, the thing about getting there is get in there and make a good decision. I made a couple bad decisions in the first half. Hey, I'm, I'm, I play a lot of minutes, so we expect that. But, I mean, we did a great job overall. I know, the pressure. You, I know you don't hear those comments of those bad decisions, but how about this rookie here? Luke, real solid performance. Uh, I think he got a few fans here. 
Yeah, I do. It's real nice. Uh, you know, Purdue's kind of uh, ruled us the last couple years. They had four straight victories, and uh, you know, it really disappointed us, and we were happy with the win here today. I saw you early in the year against Temple. You're a totally different player. Do you feel you have confidence now? Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, as a freshman, my first college game, you know, I was kind of nervous, but each game I feel more comfortable as a college player, and, you know, I think I'm continuing to improve my game each each game, and, uh, you know, it's made a world of difference. You're a scorer. Were you always good at getting free, moving out the basketball? Uh, you know, it comes much easier when you got guys like A.J. Uh, you know, they always put their best defender on A.J., and he does a great job of creating for other people, and, you know, A.J.'s always getting me easy shots along with other guys like Andre and Michael, so uh, it's a total team effort. And, you know, I owe all my openings up to my teammates. How do you two both feel about the Big Ten Conference now? This was a must win. It really was a must win. You know, Minnesota won it last year, and it seems like Purdue's been winning it for, uh, forever. But, uh, you know, it's a must win. Puts us and Purdue with both two losses. And, uh, you know, anything can happen now. The Big Ten's a tough conference, and, uh, you know, we're just hoping to get a piece of that title. Well, you need good leadership out here. And, of course, A.J., uh, you running the show, it's very important. Do you feel you're an extension of Bob Knight now when you're out there? Yeah, I have to be. In order to, you know, try to play at the next level, you got to be a point guard that can that can lead and direct things when, when coach is not leading and directing. And he put that kind of uh, leadership upon myself, and I think I'm doing handling pretty well right now. Well, we got a leader and a crowd favorite. Nice job, guys. Congratulations. Good luck the rest of the year. Thanks. Thank you.